many uh, natural scientists talking about this, but you're a sociologist. What is your sociological ta take on this? Well, it's, it's a world, to me, in which we have radically increased interdependence with one another. Climate change is, as it were, a negative expression of global interdependence. But where our mechanisms of governing world society are so primitive compared to that level of interdependence and so we're really struggling to produce any kind of coordinated response on a world level. We have to come to decisions but there is no cockpit yeah, in this uh, spaceship so, so Well so we have to depend on the existing mechanisms of government which we have which are, are several. There are first of all individual states taking their own actions and some small states like Denmark, for example, have very ambitious uh, low-carbon plans for the future anyway. Second, there are groups of states that can act together and my hope is that the division between the industrial states and the uh, developing uh, world will break down and some of the larger emerging economies, especially China, will take a significant leadership role along with uh, some of the industrial countries, especially the European Union. And then there's a, a fantastic, vibrant civil society around the world, which involves all sorts of innovations going on at many different levels, from very tiny communities through to cities, through to regions. And I think a lot of our hope rests on the energy and the inventiveness of that civil society. I think it would be naive to suppose that an environmentally sensitive business would always triumph over a more orthodox one because there are many areas where this is not necessarily the case and unfortunately large chunks of the fossil fuel industry might fall in that category. Often technological innovation destroys jobs rather than creates jobs. I think a green economy would be far more than just an economy with a load of renewables in it. It will be a different kind of economic system and when you mention the need to get to beyond GDP growth as a measure of all things, I think most of us in favour of that, but who has worked it through? We see many uh, climate sceptics around who, while they say the scientists have to follow scrupulous forms of scientific procedure, are not prepared themselves to follow those rules, will not themselves send their own publications to peer-reviewed journals, for example. So it's a bit of an unequal battle, that, and I think the climate skeptics in some countries, especially the United States, have enormous influence and have unfortunately polarized the debate around left and right. Now, I tried to argue in my book that climate change and sustainability are not left or right issues, and I still feel that very strongly. They're not intrinsically left or right issues, but... Now, um these problems are massive, but nevertheless, I ask everybody, uh, is there also something which you find a very hopeful sign, something that that shows that there is a capability of addressing these issues, whether small scale or, or large scale? Is there any such thing that you want to mention? Well, I, I think if you, since I'm mainly concerned with the politics and economics of all this, I, I would still say we have to see whether the struggles of certain states to actually create in the real world, low carbon economies will succeed and I would include the Scandinavian countries in that but also Germany because what happens in Germany may have a very big impact on the future I think. Whether the decision to give up nuclear and to embrace renewables is successful. If it is successful it could produce a new ball game because of the power of the German economy and its importance in the wider world. But at the moment, I feel that's also a very open question, what will actually happen in Germany in terms of the energy mix, but it's an important experiment to me.